<clears throat> Welcome to the Best Man Podcast. We like to talk about music, pop culture, day-to-day stuff, what pisses us off, what makes us happy. And that's my best man, Joe Fouts. What's going on, dude? And that's my best man, Dave Nestor. How you doing, buddy? Good, good. So, like when I talk to people about uh, us having this podcast together, man, like one of the things I was super excited to talk about was like the dumb shit we did as kids. And like one of the original ideas of the podcast was like the one of the original names was the dumb shit we did growing up or something like that. And like the pranks and the recklessness and we should have gotten trouble, but somehow we didn't. And like the small town feel where they kind of just like, ah, boys being boys. Like and luckily that was a thing when we were growing up and we could just be smacked in the hand and sent home. But like, I, I I can't wait to talk about this one and get into it, man. Yeah, I mean, it, it. we were pretty lucky, in all honesty, to not get in a ton of trouble for a lot of the things we did. But I, I bet a lot of kids probably felt the same. Um, we didn't really do that bad of stuff in the grand scheme. We'll see how deep we go down this rabbit hole, how much we want to actually divulge to the public. Yeah, like, uh, like my favorite part about most of this is like the like the instant karma that we got from some of it, and then like, like it wasn't that bad. We weren't van like recklessly vandalizing things, but when you tell people, when I tell people some of these stories, they're like, "You guys were so bad." We're like, "We weren't. It wasn't like that. Like, not really. We're just reckless and stupid." Yes, but most teenagers are. Yeah. So. so I guess my memory of the very first like prank dumb thing I did with you. We were at uh, your house. I'll spend the night. I think we're in like fifth, sixth grade, right? And like you lived kind of on a road heading out of uh, Cedarville, Ohio, and there was this like big ditch in front of your neighbor's yard. Do you remember where I'm going with this? A big ditch. A big ditch. So we would, it was like middle of the night, but we're in fifth and sixth grade. So it might've been like nine, 10 o'clock. It was dark out. I don't know. And we would lay in this ditch right next to this road. Not busy road, but cars were probably going by 45 to 65 miles an hour. Like, I don't know what the speed limit was at that point, but it was, it was building up to probably 55. I think, yeah, I think it was supposed to be. And 45, but we would lay in this ditch and wait till a car started to come by, and then we would pop up right out right next to the road and like yell at this at these people's cars as they would go by. And like yeah, you would hear terrible. people would like scream and yell and like freak out. That's how we were close we were to these cars. Like one of these should have hit us. Like we're jumping up yeah. literally feet away from this thing. I forgot we did that. <laughs> Maybe there so is stupid. some stuff we shouldn't say. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I feel like that's the mildest one we're going to say today. And like, probably mild. We should have gotten hit. We should have gotten, like, why did none of those cars slam on their brakes and come back and yell at us? I have no idea. Because they're all Cedarville people, maybe? And, how, we, and like, Cedarville we were, people are a little we bit nicer. one house next to your, where your, your house, your parents' house. Everybody knew who it was. Like, mm-hmm. why did nobody call your parents and tell them, like, hey, your son's being a jackass out here. Why don't you get him? Bunch of dumb kids. Boys being Older boys. Older just kids. Boys being boys. That's back when that was – people would say that back yeah. then. Back then. I mean, technically, that was 25 years ago. Wow. When you say it like that, it makes me sick to the stomach. Well, think about it. Times have changed so much, man. Yeah. I don't know that there really is a small town. All boys will be boys and girls will be girls or the kids will be kids. I don't think that happens anymore. I mean, this could be a whole different rabbit hole that, we, the, the, that, that statement was going to take us down. But like with cell phones and technology, it made the world smaller. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, much smaller. And it, it was cool to have your own little corner of the world because it made the, the world seem so much bigger and grand. But now that it's so much smaller, I mean, there's so many beautiful things I still haven't seen. 
so I won't say that. I've seen everything, but man, the internet makes it seem like it's so accessible. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I I I, I jumped off with the first mild one. I mm-hmm. mean, I show you mine, you show me yours, right? Is that how this goes? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that is. Um, I think I want to start with. Um, a specific toilet papering story. If if the people out there in the nether don't understand what toilet papering is, it's when you toilet paper someone's house or their trees or bushes in the front of their house or whatever. Um, you just take it's simple. It's as simple as it sounds. You just take rolls of toilet paper and throw it all over their property, and then hopefully don't get caught and run away. It's a simple prank. We used to do it to our high school every time you were a senior when you would graduate. You toilet paper the high school. And it was this whole thing where the cops would chase us. I don't know if you were there when we did ours. I don't think you were because you graduated from a different high school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but it was a big ordeal trying to like up the last class and try and do one more and try and make it better and try and like do all this stuff. And then you look out there and be like, uh, I mean, God rest his soul, the janitor at the time would be out there all by himself picking it up and then you feel bad and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden there'd be elementary classes out there helping him clean it up. Like it was a big, or- mm-hmm. it was an ordeal. Like it was cool. Yeah. And then by the time we got up there, the cops would like almost monitor while we were doing it, make sure we weren't doing anything else because they knew we were going <laughs> to do it. Because, because each class turned into doing that. I know. I have a visitor. You do. I don't know if she'll be want to, want to be on the podcast or not. I brought you a surprise. I heard it. She brought me a beer. One of these. The delicious Christmas ales. Oh, yeah? Look what I got. Bush. Nice. <laughs> well, I've been drinking these. These Athletic Brew IPAs. Yeah. The NAs. But they're delicious. Thank you. Okay. I'm surprised you didn't it's wear cold. a sweater. It's kind of cold in here. I know. I like it. Yeah. Do you? Mm-hmm. Okay. Good. Good. You want to say anything? You want to say hi to Joe? Hey, Joe. Hi, Carrie. I can't hear him. <laughs> he said hi. Oh. <laughs> okay, bye. All right. Well, Thank you. You're welcome. Let me know if you need anything else. Okay. Yeah. That's She's, quality right there. Her uh, her, her uh, weekly uh, pop-in. We should keep yep. like a running tally of how many times she like pops in, like unannounced pop-ins. Well, I told her, I was like, I'll let you know. I said I might need a beer here soon. If you're willing. And I was like, only if you're not too cozy. Because she just got back from a workout class, then a yoga class. Okay, so that was spent... that was her way of like, I'm not going to get up here in a few minutes. He can have this beer, and I'm not going to get up in 10. Yeah. Let me put it in my cooler that I don't have. I still have to get a cooler for this place. It'll happen. Anyway, so back to the toilet papering. Um, it wasn't as fun when we were seniors. Because the cops were there, like, monitoring, even helping, kind of giggling, like, didn't make it fun when you don't have to run from the cops. What's the thrill, you know? And then they helped. They actually had us clean up the toilet paper the next day. Yeah, Our whole class. Had I don't want to do that. Like the point of toilet papering is so you don't clean it up. So, so it was kind of fun. I mean, I remember Nathan Keller lit up a cigar on the front steps and he had a couple for us cause he was super into cigars. Yeah. So that was about uh, the coolest part. My, my first time toilet papering was with, We've said his name a couple of times. We haven't said his full name yet, but it was with Drew. And it was with his mom took us to tell the paper somebody like kind of like down the street and across the street. Were you with us when you did that? I was about to tell that story. Oh, okay. Then I'll back up because I, I thought that was yeah, the story yeah. you're talking about was his senior year. Like this, this No, no, awesome. no. I was just saying that was part of the toilet papering and I was explaining to people that it's okay. like I don't know if it's I'll just a up. Midwest thing. I don't know if any of my West Coast friends will think we're crazy. I don't know. Um, welcome to the Midwest, I guess. So one of the situations, we usually would have a sleepover. We're all in our fifth, sixth grade age range, um, I think, or maybe even into junior high. Uh, and We would normally have one of the older brothers from one of our friends, like one of the siblings, drive us until we got our own licenses and we still did the stuff even after we turned 16 yes because we were those people but there was we were really mean too i think uh because the way we chose who we would toilet paper wasn't necessarily friends of ours they were people that got made fun of or people we didn't like and that's not the way to prank you prank people you know 
early on, that was definitely how we did it. But like at, at later on in life, you would do it as like the like the the friend you poked fun of uh, in in your friend group. Some of you are friends with you hung out regularly, right? But like early yeah. on, like we were just like, oh, this kid's a nerd. Let's do it to him. Like, yep, yep. Um, so without naming names, unfortunately, this gentleman was not one of our friends. He was one that got made fun of, but still part of the same church because we all grew up going to church and um, they didn't last in the community long. I don't know if what we did was part of the reason why they left, but in any case, I could see what we did as part of part of the reason. So we gathered all of our things. Um, we were close enough in proximity to this house that we didn't need a vehicle. So we put on our army gear or black clothes and like beanies and like face masks and stuff. Cause we always made it like a mission. So it was kind of fun. Um, at least I remember doing that. So we couldn't be seen. We'd be in the shadows and stuff. We have backpacks or whatever we needed to carry our toilet paper in. If we didn't have a vehicle, I think we would usually just throw like a 24 or 48 pack of toilet paper rolls into a van when we would do it that way. Um, I remember this house had a very big pine tree in the front yard and our goal I remember was to try to get it as high as possible. So we were toilet paper in this house and I, I forget all the minute details. I might need your help with some of them, but I remember lights turning on us running and I'm pretty sure we got chased by the mom. And then I also heard, am I skipping any details? During the cleanup, she, like, like hurt herself. Like, I don't know how far, far you're in. So, one, like... I mean, I'm basically to the end, because I... Okay, so we never talked about how old we were. Like, we were, No, we were, I, we were, I thought the age range was somewhere between fifth grade and junior high. Like, we're probably, like, fifth, sixth grade. Like, very, very young. Okay. Our buddy's mom was the one that took us to go get toilet paper. And then our buddy's mom was the one that was like standing across the street watching us do this to the, these people's houses. I totally then, forgot about that. The next morning, that woman called uh, our buddy's mom. I almost just dropped her full name. <laughs> our buddy's mom and was like, you guys need to come over and clean this up now. And our buddy's mom was like, well, they're still sleeping. I'll come over and clean it up. So she went back over there the next morning and cleaned up all that toilet paper. Oh, no. Oh, wow. Well. I don't remember that. I remember uh, lights turning I remember... on and us hiding. But, like, I almost did it again. She, like, buddy's mom was just standing across the street, like, watching all this. All the lights turn on, and she's just smiling, having a good old time. Like, it was nothing. I don't remember her being there because oh, I remember I, all of I our parents, or at least so my parents. Clearly because I thought it was so wild. I remember my parents getting very upset. Um, grounded, I guess, probably yelled at. They came and picked me up the next day. Um, we had to go clean it up. I had to apologize. I remember that. Because according to the story that they told all the parents, because I think um, at least where we went to church, there was a mm -hmm. church directory. Yeah. Everyone had everyone else's phone number at any time. They could look in the church directory and call whoever. That's back when people had landlines. Pictures um, of the family. Called my parents. Kids, names, and yep. phone numbers. It was the whole thing in there. Yep. So they called my house and told my parents what happened. And then my parents were not happy because they knew each kid. And they mm -hmm. called each family. And they also said that she almost broke her neck trying to get the toilet paper from the top of the tree. Oh my Most God. of that toilet paper will just go away with some rain. Just leave it. Yeah. Jesus. I don't like it's. Bad. But yeah, that was that was insane. I do remember that one. I don't even remember that person's name or who they were. Like, that's how like, like I'm, I'll just blame it on my memory. Like, that's how bad it is. But, OK, I can um, tell you after. Yeah. OK. Or I can text it to you. Yeah. I'll text it to you. I probably still remember. Um, so we'll try to do this in chronological order so we don't get too jumped all over the place. But like when the pranks okay. got good was when we were all hanging out at our one buddy's house, like a few houses down from you and his brothers were getting involved and like they would video like in hindsight, I want to talk to them as adults now because I'm very curious to know if they were just like egging us on to see how far we would do, do this and how far we would take stuff. 
and they just wanted to videotape it to see all the stuff. Um, to see all the stuff that we would do and see like because like I don't really remember some of the oldest brothers getting involved. I just remember them being there and videotaping us. Um, and I don't know if that was just the role or we were just jumping in and doing all this dumb stuff. But like my f- favorite, one of my like top three favorite ones, and this is kind of a long story with this one, is the um, when we found those like uh, refrigerator boxes and wash machine boxes. Um, so when we would do some of these pranks, we were rolling 20 deep. 15 20 people deep and everybody's just standing around hiding and like in the bushes and all this stuff the people were recording from different angles and in the cer- center of it there would be like three or four of us and so we had a, a couple very large boxes and we like so we grew up in a town where there was a college next to us like in the town like small christian baptist college and kind of majority of our pranks growing up circled around just messing with these students, messing with the campus safety of this. And so, like, we were in these big boxes, and we'd just be sitting next to the sidewalk. And as soon as somebody would get close to us and start walking, because we had little holes cut into it, as soon as they would start walking by us, we'd, like, scoot over and bump into them. Um, and they would freak out every single time. So this is kind of like a catalyst of, like, months and months and months of us doing like pretty terrible things to these people like we'll we'll probably get into some of them but like this is like like kind of like the end result of months and months of like messing with these people and like there was a group of people that finally had enough of it and when the night that we were doing this we should have stopped like we had done it long enough the word got out people knew that we were in these boxes and people were like, okay, like, we're done with these kids. Um, so we're in these boxes, and we're kind of working our way through campus, through, like, the main strip of Cedarville. And middle of me, the day. I'm in one. By the way, middle of the day. No, well, started in the middle of the day. Like, at this point, I remember it being dark when starting okay. to get dark. I was going to say, and these, the people that are hearing this need to know that Yes, we were following people around in boxes and bumping into them and scaring them in broad daylight sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not just at night. It's so random. You'll see videos like this on like Facebook or TikTok or any of the places like Vines when they were a thing. Yeah. We could have totally had viral videos from all the stuff we did back then. We um, did it before st- it was popular online. And we were doing it like pre-Jackass era. Like when we were doing this, mm-hmm. like Jackass, like, like the CKY boys stuff came out like shortly after we were doing the majority of the stuff recording. It. So yeah. broad daylight, we've been doing it too long. It creeped into dark and now people were like, okay, we're over the kids jokes. And so like the age range from this was like 15 to like the oldest one was probably like 25, 26 somewhere in there so like the oldest ones were brothers of the group that we were in so it was me we'll keep it simple drew and then the third name should i say just the first name sure all right so the third name was jason we're in these boxes i think everybody else is kind of standing around us and i wasn't there for this specific one by the way Okay, I I didn't know if you were here for this one. So <laughs> we uh so we bump into this this person and they just two hand shove into the top of the box. Well the top of the box, that's where heads at, right? And so like basically just punched uh Jason in the face. And out of anybody in the group to do this to, he's not the one. Like he's probably gonna like allow you to do it but like when actually like things come to happen he has two other brothers around here like that are older than everybody who are ready to go at any given second right and so like that they're happens. not small people either large men strong men so that happens drew like pops up out of his box but he's still in the box right like the box is still on him so like stands up and like 
starts yelling like he's going to go do something about it. Somebody out of nowhere. Obviously, we're in a box still. We have no peripherals. We have this, what we can see. Somebody spears Drew, full-on tackle. And, like, I think my buddy's dead, right? And so, like, all I see is a dude on the ground that just tackled him, the guy that just two-hands shoved him. So I'm, like, in my box still. Like, smart man would say, toss the box off and let's go, right? No, stay in the box. Stay in the box and just full-on sprint jump over drew and like uh sailor dive into this guy and just take him out full box we're on the ground so now we got three bodies down everybody pops up obviously those two dudes pop up not in boxes right the three of us pop up still in boxes and all of a sudden we all get tackled there's people all over the place it's a bad scene like and before we can get everybody that's around the woodwork watching this happen before they can get involved, these dudes just take off running. They're gone. All right. So we've been doing this too long. People got mad. We had a little fight, a little scrap. No punches were thrown. Jason is a, a little concussed because he took a two-hand shove to the face, not knowing it was coming. We should stop, right? Smart man says we stop. No. Smart. Smart Double people. down. So now <laughs> most of our boxes are destroyed. We have one clean box. And so we have one box right outside a girl's dorm. Once again, probably the worst decision of where to start this, right? 100%. Well, we think everyone needs to know that university, guys' dorms, girls' dorms, very strict Christian university. There's curfew. You need to know that because that actually sets the tone for this whole story even better. Yeah. So now we're getting to the point where we're like creeping into curfew, right? Because we've been doing this. Mm -hmm. And once again, this, this dorm is literally like, 25 feet from where this scrum just happened. So we're all hiding in bushes. And then out of nowhere, dude comes running out of nowhere, picks up the box and takes off running with the box. Two other guys are right behind him with like cans of water balloons. Pop, 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 pop. And I don't know if you had a water balloon toss at you in point blank range. It hurts. It so, can, yeah, for sure. These two dudes are running full speed away from where our buddy was at. Literally, do they know there's literally 20 of us in and around this spot? And dude's oldest brother, the one guy who you don't want to be involved in, comes dropping like 15 feet out of a tree and just drops in front of these dudes, grabs one up, has him over his shoulder, picks another dude up. And has him, and then this third guy that's coming in, like, like, sees this dude has his buddies wrapped up, just stops, turns around, takes off the other direction, right? And like, these other guys have other friends with them. They kind of come running out. Then all of a sudden, we come running out, and so the middle brother, uh, is my favorite out of all of them. I I think I can say that. Like, just a f hilarious human being throughout life, right? Um. Mm -hmm. So there's, yeah, the directly middle one. And mm -hmm. he's probably the biggest wild card out of all of them. Like, he, at that point in his life, he, he would throw down with anybody at any point. Mm -hmm. And he was ready to. And we kind of <clears throat> exchange words back and forth. Um, we're all involved. And, like, I'm 15, 16 years old. I'm all gassed up. We're all ready to go, right? It gets broken up, kind of things in. Um, doesn't ever stop us from doing pranks to these people. It doesn't ever stop us. Like Later on in the night, we come to find out that this whole team, everybody was there, was on the soccer team, the Cedarville soccer team. And a handful of us were in high school, but we were practicing with the high school, the college team regularly, like a few times a week. Um, they, their coaches would help with us with our practices. We would go there and give them some extra numbers. It was good for everybody, but we knew all of them. And as soon as we saw them in like a good light, we knew all of them. So a couple years go by and I end up moving to Indiana. And uh, a kid on my soccer team in Indiana, like I knew his name. I'm like, God, like, how? this name sounds so familiar. And I could never put two and two together. And like we became pretty tight and we uh, go to uh, – I go to over to his house like during like our two a days and I'm in his house between practices 
and his oldest brother walks in. And sure as shit, man, he was the first dude that Spear drew. He was the first dude that stole the box from Jason and his I buddies came up behind him. That. He was the dude that was running and uh, the oldest, the second oldest brother grabbed him and threw him up over his shoulder. Like, like he, he was a, like the instigator kind of throughout this whole thing. And like, I see him and I turn around and stand up in his house and me and him have this whole like, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Then we figure it out. And we're like, oh, shh. Well, this is really funny right now. And like, we kind of had a mm-hmm. moment. We kind of like bygones be bygones and like kind of told a few stories, but like it was hu- absolutely hilarious. Like being in this dude's mm-hmm. house and like becoming friends with his younger brother. Like it was, fu- it was funny, kind of full circle thing. Yeah, that never happens. But I mean, very unlikely that that would ever happen again. I mean, you were two, a- two and a half hours, two hours away from. Cedarville, something like that. Two and a half, three hours. Completely different school. Different state. Different state, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, funny. Um, What could we do for our next one? Are uh, you with us? You said that you were with us when I hit that deer, right? I was in the back of the truck okay. with Nate. Let, let's, tell the, yeah. let's tell this story. Tell it from your point of view, then I'll tell it from my point of view. And, like, I'm super excited that you said that name – Nate a couple of times because he's back on social media and made a post the other day that kind of like made me tear up. Like I haven't heard from cool. him in forever. And like, he kind of had that, that comment. So like, it was, this was kind of a perfect story of with him involved. Yeah. Um, I think it was, were Lee, I can say first names, right? Yeah. First names were good. Were Lee and Eric in the front with you? Yeah. Cause we were rolling three deep in the front, right? Yeah. All right. So like preface, I drove a S10, probably like a 2002 S10. We were all seniors around this time, right? Close to it, yeah, if not. Um, seniors, maybe like junior, fall year, somewhere around there. And uh, I had a S10 um, bench seat in the front nothing behind so like very 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 small truck and so go ahead all right so we were there were five or six of us i think in this specific situation there were five two in the back of the truck bed three in the front of the truck when we were younger i don't know if we were the ones that come up with it i don't think so so it was the first time i did it <laughs> I'm so used to saying his name. Twenty five. Like it's okay. I'll type it in. So, it was me and Jason. Um, what is Jared and Brandon? And so we were okay. playing soccer. We were the young people in the team. I was the youngest, and then it kind of went up from there. And Jared got us doing it, and then I did it for like the next like six years of my life. And like I want to tell so many stories about this. Like so, this is kind of a good catalyst of like where it, like this was probably the last time I ever did this. This story, okay. And so that we okay. can kind of backtrack of all the other times. <clears throat> so you'll have to correct me with uh, some of the details, but. We did something uh, back when we were younger to play pranks on people, and we called it road killing. Mm-hmm. So we would take road kill that we'd find on the side of the road or in the road. All throughout Cedarville, you would always see it: deer, raccoons, a bunch of other animals. Um, and you would almost like a lot of put a little a lot of wildlife, like a little tick in your head, like when you drive around town, you see it, and like okay, I remember that's there, and like mm-hmm. so that on the weekend we would go back and get it. So the, the thing with roadkill is it's a prank where you take dead roadkill and you um, put it on people's properties, mailboxes, porches, string it up sometimes. Um, I've even heard of some people in Cedarville on their cars. tying it to people's mufflers. So then when they drive away, they don't know. They did that to my brother. Some of his college friends did that. Uh, and he drug around like a raccoon or something around town. It's terrible. It's so terrible. Um. In any case, I don't remember what animal we had in our possession. I think it was a raccoon. 
<laughs> that we were taking. Is it not a raccoon that we were no, taking? I have no idea. I, I like okay. It doesn't my matter. brain white. So we, yeah, we uh, we had roadkill in our possession in the back of the truck. I didn't know that. I, I forgot all about that. That's hilarious. That makes it so much. We better. were taking it to a location near the road we were on. Okay. It just so happened to be an employee of the school we went to. Okay. Yeah. 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 I got you. I know where we're going. Okay. She was a frequent flyer for our pranks. Oh, yeah. I'm getting nervous. I just burped. Um, so in any case, we had roadkill with us. I think we put it usually in a garbage can lid. And uh, we were going to go put it on this person's porch, I think, or in their mailbox. A lot of times with long driveways with country houses, it's easier to just do the mailbox, which is so bad. Because really, it doesn't affect the people as much as it affects the mail person. Sorry, Jeremy. I didn't even think about that until just now. <laughs> But in any case, it doesn't he was matter. With us when we did it um, all the time, so I mean, it's I mean, if he ever sees it, like he would, I think he would find it funny, or maybe at this point in his life, maybe I don't know. I don't know. Would you put the mail in the mailbox if there was roadkill in it? <laughs> Just gonna shove it up over. That's a <laughs> that's a question for all mailmen out there, male women. Um, anyway, so we were riding in the back of this truck out one of Cedarville's country roads. Um, Joe, two other guys in the front, me, another guy in the back. And at the specific moment, we started to accelerate in speed. Um, we were having fun. We were young and stupid. And I remember it was either, I think I had my hands on top of the truck, so if I remember correctly. Tell, tell why we were speeding up. Why we were speeding up? Yeah. So there was that point on that road as you're heading out of Cedarville. Oh, to try to. Where it has one of those like little like, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, like humps in the road that will kind of like toss you up a little bit and so like we're speeding up to kind of hit that hump and in hindsight fucking stupid i got two people in the back of the truck that could just be mm -hmm. tossed out any second we we could have or should have died so joe's accelerating i forgot you were doing it for that reason but we were all probably cheering you on if we didn't slam on the brakes it would have got questionable right so joe was accelerating to go over the hill because we're stupid and ironically enough like Joe was saying earlier, some of these pranks, karma happens before we even do the prank. A deer ran out in front of the truck, and Joe slams his brakes. We did hit the deer, though. Hit the deer. Yes. We yeah, hit the deer. we still hit the deer. I don't remember if I stayed in the back of the truck, but I think Nate flew out or jumped out. All right, so. No, over this, the truck. So at this, po- at this point, I'll take it. So over the truck, that's right. I'm speeding up to hit this hill. All of us know this hill's here. Like nobody needed to say anything. Everybody in the front seat, we looked at each other, had that moment of, this is a good idea. Started accelerating. And we all kind of (laughs) like had that giggle of like, Oh, it's a good idea. Crank the music, right? Loud as we can go. Like, and just full send. Right. And we, as soon as I hit the top of the hill, there's a deer just sitting there. I slam on my brakes full as hard as I could. And the second I stop, I hit that deer. And like I probably like smashed and then and then stopped, right? I hit him solid. And this deer hit the ground and probably slid like 15, 20 feet. Mm-hmm. And the deer it rolled a little bit. Still slid. fucking sliding on the ground. And the two kids in the front seat just go, this is why we're here. And they're out the door, and the deer's still sliding, right? And so they're out the door chasing this fucking deer that, I don't know if it's dead. I don't know if it's going to go away. I don't know what the fucking deal is with this thing. So I'm trying to watch this deer, and as like we're coming to a stop, they're out the door, and Nate had slid up over the car and was on the front windshield holding like the hood like, he about went caught to the deer before anybody else did, right? And I don't know if yeah. he was standing up. I don't know what was happening in the back of the truck. But all I know was... He must we- have been the one standing up, because I remember sit- I was laying down, I think, at the time, because I saw the hill, and I was like, all right. <laughs> Duck and cover. Duck for cover. <laughs> so, yeah, like, right? we hit this deer, two kids in the front seat, out the door, after the deer, Nate's deer life, and I'm just like... 
I don't know how I'm going to explain this to anybody of what just happened. And right. like, we obviously the two dudes don't catch the deer. They get pretty close. Like, no, it gets up and runs away. Like it popped up and ran away, but like Lee got Lee got close. Like Lee got he's quick within fighting fighting distance of like, and he had caught another deer in the past. Mm-hmm. Like that that had happened. We had caught a baby deer in the past, and so like this almost happens, right? So like. Um, that's a little teaser for you guys with that. We've caught a baby deer in the, in the past. And so like devastating moment. Like I get, like, I don't even call my parents that night. Cause like I'm, I'm hours away from home. Like, cause at this point I'd moved to Fort Wayne and, and I was come back and visiting and had the truck and call my mom the next day and tell her. And she's like, well, you gotta tell Tom. And so like I call, I tell my stepdad what happened. He's like, well, is everybody okay? It's like, physically, yeah. Emotionally, like there's a couple, there's a couple of people that might not be, and uh, he was like, "All right, well, I'll take you to get parts for it, and then you're gonna have to fix it." I'm like, "I don't know how to fix it," and he's like, "Well, you're gonna figure it out." I'm like, "All right, that's like, awesome. Um, Best way to learn." Yeah. So, where are we at? I don't know that? that we did that much. Thirty-seven minutes in. Okay. So. I don't think we did that much. Um, after that, if I remember correctly, no, we I won't. think that might have been one of our last ones. That that was literally the last time I had ever gone out that moment. So yeah, backtrack to. I don't think this story was the first night I went out and did this, but I think it was. It might have been. It might have not been. I don't know. We've done it so many times, right? So I'm out with the. Those three original names I said, and. Our buddy Jared was the oldest, and he was the one that got us into this. And like, I don't know if his, like his he, he had older brothers. Like, I don't know if they got him into this, right? So like, we uh, we get out and do this, and we uh, we have an animal, and there's this house, this this family that had a handful of daughters, very good looking daughters, and. A uh, dad that was a, a true farm farm man, farm boy, farm dad. I don't know what, how you want to call it. And uh, He's a so we we're like, we're, we're gonna we're gonna do this house. So like, we start. What did you say? You're completely huh? frozen. I don't got anything you're saying to me. Oh, you're. I, I've been listening. You're you're real fuzzy now too, but it's okay. not storming here, so it might be on your end. I'm not sure. Okay. As long as you're recording your own, it should be okay. okay. So, um, whatever time this is at forty eight minutes, maybe we cut out like a ten second clip or whatever. So, we got this animal, and we're headed up to this family's house to drop this animal off, and like. I'm the first one and then it goes like another person and another person and and then the the driver is the closest one to the car right and that's the oldest Jared so we're we're creeping up to this house and I've told this story so many times at this point I'm like 100% sure this happened and like I would love for one of them to reply back to this like dude you're so far off like that's not how it happened at all but like in my head like it's slowly built to this and so this is what this is what fucking happened right so we get up to this house and all of a sudden I just hear this and like that is the scariest sound of hearing that shotgun rack, right? And then mm-hmm. all like I just drop the shovel with the dead animal on it and just turn around and take off running. Well, apparently they already fucking saw the saw the dad on the front porch, right? And so they're way far ahead of me. And so like on the edge of their property there, there was like a, a cornfield. So that's where we parked the truck was just past the cornfield. Well, about a hundred yards in front of where we parked the truck, there was a bike path, and so it had a little bit of a what you call it, right? Like a little bit of a hump to get over the bike path because those old those old railroad tracks. So we go, I turn around, I'm full sprint, and they're like, I'm not even off the people's property, and they're already in the truck starting it, right? And so like I'm chasing up the truck, going as fast as I can, and he's like, 
right before I get to the point where I'm getting ready to grab onto the tailgate and like kind of lift and toss myself in, he slams on his brakes. So like I grab the tailgate and lift and toss, and he slams his brakes in the middle of this, and I just fucking smash into the back of the truck. Like, like where the window and shit is, like in the bed, rack myself face first into that, right? So then he knows I'm in, so he slams on his gas, tears off. So then I slide back and smash against the tailgate. And so I'm like, I'm mm-hmm. in a bad spot, like hit twice. He's tearing out. He hits this fucking hill, right? And just looking, whoop. And I <laughs> pop up. In my head, I was at least 30 feet in the sky. I probably popped up like six inches, but I have like a lot of things going through my head right now. Like I'm terrified. Right. I had a guy with a shotgun. I just got smashed by the truck twice, and now I'm up in the sky getting ready to die. Dude, like I don't think I've been more scared in a 10-second segment of my life ever. <laughs> <laughs> except for that were you moment praying? right there she was like please god i'm sorry for being bad no oh like, as my he's god through the you air, would like, think we would have stopped right like, you, go. you would have thought that that was the last thing we did that night no, no that just doubled us down but like we're like oh we have we either have so many more we want to do tonight i would have never chose that place by the way you know where i'm talking about yeah yeah like, and i know what he does oh the yeah beast of a man it's a big guy. Um, you want to talk I mean, about like? Are we? Can it, we say like what he did at like what his job was at the time, or is that give it up to? I mean, I don't know if it. Yeah, sure. I don't think it matters because nothing happened. Yeah, right? so like he, he was defending for, like, his property. Uh, he was being a human. Yeah, he worked for uh, like a a company that would extract bull semen and mm-hmm. sell it to, to farmers to get their cows pregnant. And I, mm-hmm. I forget the name of the company, but like, very successful company. Yeah, he's a. He was a hoss of a man, and yeah, because he had decision. to catch bull sperm. Bull sperm, yeah. Uh, rough job. So, were you with us when we got the the deer? When we actually did find a dead deer? I think so. Can you remind me where we took it? Um, another one of our friends' house who we played soccer with. Kenny. Oh, we took it to their house? Yeah. Why would we do that? So this I is, wasn't there. So, I don't think I was part of that. So one. this is funny. So this so this is okay. funny. So like once again, I think it was the four of us again. And was Kenny involved? No. So this is this is the best part about this one. So like we went and got this we found a dead deer and the two other kids that were older than me were like, We aren't touching that thing. Jared was a hunter, so like he was like, dude, like it's just a dead deer. Who cares? He was like, yeah, Alex, you aren't a pussy. You'll do it. And like being the youngest kid there, you're like, yeah, you're right. I ain't a fucking pussy. And so we go up to grab this fucking deer, man, and he's got baseball gloves on, like two baseball gloves, and I just got my bare hands. And so like he goes to grab, I'm like, I'm gonna get one of them gloves, man. Like help help me out a little bit. So like he gives me one of his gloves and like we go to grab this deer and as we're picking it up, it's like big and bloated, like round. And so its leg breaks in my hand and like I just like drop it, like hurl it, turn it over and just like start dry heaving. I'm about to puke on top of this deer, right? Somehow or another we get it into the truck, right? And we can't figure out where to take it, but we're pretty close to our our buddy kenny's house and so we're like we'll just take it there and like we we drop it off like we don't even like we stop roll it out the back of the truck and then tear off like we don't even like take it up close anywhere right so it looks like literally like this deer just like kind of where we left it there's no way this bloated dead deer just randomly died there but it's also believable right Mm -hmm. we forgot all about it like we didn't like there's another kid in another town that Kenny thought it was. Kenny fought that kid and we thought it was funny just to not t- tell him who did it. And like years and years and years went by. And one day we're talking about it like as if he knew and we forgot that we had never told him. And he's like, "Wait. 
that was you guys? We're like, oh shit, like, that's our bad. Like, we, we thought we told you about that. He's like, I thought oh, it was so and so. Like, I beat that kid up. I'm like, oh, <laughs> no, buddy, it wasn't him. It was us. No, nah, it happens. It happens. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll take the reins now because it was probably around the same time. Um, I didn't know you guys did that to Kenny. I, I wasn't around for the conversation afterwards either. So I'm glad you told me. That's awesome. Um, but were you with the group when they turned a prank on me when we were going to prank somebody else? I don't know how to answer that because it might, there might have been multiple. So like, why don't you tell the story and I'll let you know whether I was involved. Okay. I forget what we were going to do. We were planning on, so originally we were at, um, the main house that we always would hang out at. We would sleep over there all the time. We had a huge tree fort there. Um, so many stories will be told about that place probably on this podcast. No apologies necessary to the family that owns that house. But I feel like we should send them like flowers or like buy them dinner like <laughs> once a month for some of the stuff yeah. that we put them through. Yeah. But I also some... feel like the dad at that house, like kind of like to chime in to like to explain the family dynamic. Mm-hmm. We were going to Blue Jacket one time. And they had like this old like motorcycle helmet that was like beat up and like ratty and like it's from like the seventies. And he bet me like twenty dollars I wouldn't wear it during the entire showing of Blue Jacket, which is like an outdoor like theater, like hundreds of people in this like outdoor theater, like very well known, mm-hmm. like very to do thing. Like people are kind of dressed up there, and like I'm wearing a fucking motorcycle helmet for twenty bucks in the middle of the summer, and like why not? that that's the dad like that that's the family yeah. that ex, that that kind of pulls it all together and the mom's right next to him like so like that's who they were they they were down for a good joke they were but also surprisingly strict at certain times i got kicked out of their house for a full week when we were all supposed to stay there for a full week when we were going to that camp at the university because i didn't close the door when i left the house well in his defense Literally 10 seconds before you walked in the door, he came in and said, if I have to come up here and shut this door again, I'm going to kick somebody out for a week. And then you walked in 10 seconds later. Yeah. Um, I walked out and I thought someone was behind me and I was wrong and I got yelled at for it. So this next one is really good. Um, the original prank idea, same kind of group of guys that we were hanging out with. I don't know the exact people. It doesn't really matter. We were going to play a prank on one of the guys in our group is what I was told. So a couple of them pulled me to the side and was like, hey, we're going to go, quote unquote, do this. But really, we're going to play a prank on this other person. Um, I think they had mentioned something about um, what were we going to do. I think we we're going to duct tape them to a sign or something. Well, they lied. They all were going to turn on me and I didn't know it. And so we all got in this minivan, one of the minivans that we used. I think it was. Uh, I forget whose it was. doesn't matter. Um, there were like five of us though, including me. So I remember when we were all supposed to like turn on the guy we were pulling the prank on, they like said, okay, go. Cause we pulled near mom and dad's dairy bar, which is like a little tiny snack shop in Cedarville. Um, they used to sell penny candies when we were younger. We could ride our bikes there. No problem. Um, that's basically all we did all summer was try to make a little bit of money, ride our bikes around, play pranks, all that fun stuff, play soccer. Um, so they pulled into mom and dad's dairy bar and they're like, all right, get him. And then I turned to get the guy they were going to get. He was turning to get me and everybody else was too. So they all <laughs> turned on me, held me down, duct tape me. I don't think I was in, I think I might've been in my boxers. If I remember correctly, they, got you down they duct tape me to place. like a, uh, no parking sign on main street. Yeah. Um, and left me there. Yeah. But it was technically on campus safety or the university property. Yeah. So I was duct taped to the sign. People were beeping and honking or whatever. A couple of people pulled up and be like, Dave, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, the guys just did this to me. I think they'll be back soon. And so people just never, nobody stopped to help me, by the way. They so just let me stay there. Duct tape was like me and my dad drove by you. And my dad was like, is that Dave? And I was like, who? And he was like, there's somebody duct taped to a sign back there. I'm like, probably and like that was it we just kept on moving everybody did 
So what ended up happening was um, they never came back to get me. <laughs> no. By the way. I was there by myself. Campus safety pulled up with their lights on. And they knew that we were, you know, that group of kids because we were known because some of our parents actually worked at the university, which made it even like more funny that we would play pranks on the campus and also to the students that went there because like yeah. it made our parents look so bad because they were staff mm-hmm. members. Um, but like at the same point, especially like, the main one, there was times where I remember doing something and like when any of the stuff that involves campus safety, I'm not going to tell any of those stories. Cause I don't know how that, I don't know. I don't know those laws, but I'll say that there was times where we would do something and we would take off running. They would get on their megaphone and be like, it's a $50 fine for running. And we would turn around back and yell back and fucking catch me. <laughs> and like, obviously they would never catch us, but like they would, they would try their fucking right. best. They would be driving through grass, tearing through parking lots. Like you aren't going to catch a bunch of kids in a, running around a campus that they know probably better than you and you're in a car and are refusing to get out. Right. Um, so I remember, I don't remember which specific campus safety officer, uh, came over and saw me first, but, um, I remember a second one came up and I'm pretty sure the second one was the one that was drilling me with questions. So they didn't cut me down. Not at first. They wanted to know who did it first. And I refused to tell them who did it. And they were just told some like wild story about a masked man that weighed 800 pounds. (laughs) Like just like, no, they knew I was defending my friends. Yeah. Right. They knew. Well, I thought they were my friends. They duct taped me to a sign. I was defending the people that did it. (laughs) Right. Just imagine, just imagine what would have happened. So I never told them. Just imagine what would happen to you if you actually would have gave up those names. Oh, that would have whooped me. You would have been naked next time. Yeah, probably. And then rip that duct tape off. (laughs) Um, Right off. Bad news bears, man. Yeah, man. It's like a waxing you didn't want. Um, Yeah. But anyway, so uh, they they were they got on a notepad like a detective and they started writing down like, all right, so who did this to you? I wouldn't tell them. They're like, you're going to have to tell us who did this to you before we cut you down and all this stuff. They were like telling me they wouldn't help me until I told them who it was. That really happened. And I was just refusing. I was refusing. I was refusing. And finally, a cop came up. I was like, is everything okay here? And I was like, it's fine. You know, it was a prank. I got duct taped to a sign. If you guys could cut me down, that'd be great. So the cop cut me down. Yeah. Not the campus safety. I remember that. Well, we never really messed um, with the cops, like we like the actual no. cops. Like, there was a few like little vandalizing stuff we did, but it wasn't like destroying property. It was more or less like moving property if we could. But like, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. actually like stuff we could get serious trouble for. We 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 steered clear of that. We kind of did like the harmful pranking the random passerby. Yeah, we were psychological about it. I mean. I know my siblings both had gotten in trouble with the law for doing things they shouldn't have. Yeah. Um, not Renee. Um, the other no. two. So but I know so did so did my neighbors, right? The older boys. A lot of those guys got in trouble, like actual trouble. Yeah. yeah. So I think we learned from uh, older their mistakes like, that like, we need to I find. I was the things. youngest. You were the youngest. There was another one that was the youngest or middle kid. There was another one that was one of the youngest. Like we were kind of like all of, we had a bunch of older siblings. We kind of learned how to get away from, get away with things. And so we kind of knew where, especially the in a small town. Dodge. Yeah. Yeah. So especially like, that small town. Like we had, we did a lot of stuff with like water balloons. Um, do you remember like one of the, my, my, my favorite story is we were trying to not, so one of my favorite stories was with the water balloons and we had done a lot of different things this night. Like w- our buddy's house had pressurized uh, fire extinguishers They pressurized fire extinguishers. My brother is driving my grandpa's truck around and we're in the bed of the truck because it has a cover on it and videotaping it. And they're blasting people with this fire extinguisher with water and like 
it hurts. Like it comes out so fast. And like they'd fill it up halfway with water, then pressurize it, and they're blasting people. And these kids are like chasing after us, like, I'm gonna be here. But because they wouldn't cuss, and like as we're like blasting them with water in the face as they're trying to like catch up to us or whatever. So it was this night that we're doing this, and we're videotaping all of this, obviously, because we're morons. And so we are doing this, and then we uh get one of our buddies were driving through downtown and he has a water balloon and he just kind of tosses that out this dude and he's walking down the street holding this girl's hand and he just kind of like lofts it out there. We're probably going like 20 miles an hour, like pretty slow through to the downtown and lofts this water balloon out. Just a perfect nut shot. Blast this dude. He drops to his knees. He's screaming, rolling around. We circle. $20, you can't do it again. He's back up walking with his girl. Dude lofts the water balloon out again. Doubles down. Hits him again right in the fucking dick. And dude drops like a back. Like, oh, my God. I felt so bad for him. We didn't go back and check on him. But, like, I'd imagine that guy never had kids. Like, two times, 20 miles an hour water balloon just blasting you. Like, you might be right. Bad dude was in a bad spot. Yeah. Dude, I have a good one. Okay. So this wasn't a prank, but it has to do with campus safety. Um, you know this story. I was hanging out with two people, a male and a female. One of them grew up with us. Um, same group, same pranky group or whatever. And the other one was a, a female that uh, one of our friends married that you already had talked about a couple times. Got it. Yeah. She lived up my road. There's, there's a good chance okay. that. They'll they'll watch this. Right? Yeah, that'd be great. And I hope they do because the, the references are cool. And I like the way that we do our references. At least we try to be appropriate <laughs> about it. Um, so we were hanging out, all three of us. And it was getting close to curfew, but it was a weekend and I didn't sign out. So let me explain to you what it means to sign out at a Christian university. Because I went there briefly. If you don't make it by curfew and you signed out, you won't get in trouble. If you didn't make it by curfew and you didn't sign out, you get in trouble. That makes um, no sense. Very strict discipline when it comes to. Is it just like head counting? Like, so I know where everybody's at. Is that what the whole purpose of that is? Like what's what? It's an accountability thing. Why wouldn't you just sign out every time you left the place then? Uh, because you're not supposed to, I think you're only allowed to stay off campus a certain amount of time during the actual semester. Like it was really strict when I went, I remember. That's absolutely um, insane. 10 o'clock curfew on weeknights, 12 o'clock curfew on weekends. And girls and guys dorms couldn't socialize. I think you could go in the lounges until a certain time, like not even close to. Um, I think they had their uh, resident assistants and resident directors, usually close to the lobby area, making sure there wasn't any interactions with males and females closer to actual curfew time. Interesting. Um, but you were allowed to sign out. You could go stay with family. You can go stay with friends. Because a lot of people that went to the university actually lived decently close. So you could sign out, especially on weekends. Uh, they didn't really encourage it during the week. But weekends is no big deal because you didn't have to worry about chapel. Yeah. Because you had to get a chapel every day. And they would scan you in. And they would know if you skipped chapel. And that was the thing you would get in trouble for, too. Man, my brother um, told me this deal he had with a few people where they would, like, they figure out a way to like walk by the scanners and scan scan themselves in and never go in or like mm-hmm. somebody be able to walk by and like scan a couple at a time. Yeah. They they figured that out. But I remember Tim, he told me that people used to do that because he lived in the Brock dorm, which was like the cool dorm for a while. Um, where all the uh soccer players and stuff would stay. But in any case, um I remember I was it was either Friday or Saturday night. It was really late, but it was not like that late, probably like one, something like that. So it's past curfew. Yeah. I remember sneaking back into my dorm to get my phone charger. And if you remember the different um, dormitories they had there, some of them only had about eight foot brick walls near the stair wells because you couldn't go around the front because they would see you and they had cameras and stuff or the resident director would possibly see you or whatever. So I couldn't just walk in the front door, get something and then leave. So I had to sneak in. This isn't the first time I'd done this, by the way. Um, 
But is that's the first time. The first caught. time you actually done this, or have you done this multiple times? I had done this multiple times, but I never got caught until now. <laughs> so I was sneaking back in to get my phone charger, and those two people were hanging out at the gas station in Cedarville, which is right across the street from the main entrance to the university where the dormitories are, like right there on the right. I was the first dorm on the right when you enter the university from that area. So it wasn't that far from the car. So I ran across the street, jumped the wall, went up to my room, came back down, was jumping back over the wall. As I was coming down and landing on the ground, immediately campus safety was already parked there. I guess the friends I was with didn't see them. Um, Not that they could warn me anyway. My phone was dead. That's why I was getting the charger. So, all right, we're back from our... From our pee break. Hello, 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 hello. Check, check, check. Two, two, two. Break, Yo, you there? Breaker. Yep, I hear you good, man. Okay, cool. Sound good. <clears throat> so I, I got the details wrong. Back to my my uh, prank, which really wasn't a prank, but it has to do with campus safety at, at the university I went to. So, so you jumped over this eight-foot wall, and then... I jumped over this eight-foot wall, got my phone charger, jumped back down, and it was not a rent-a-cop that was waiting for me. It was an actual Cedarville cop. That's why my two friends did not come over. Their lights were on. Their spotlight was looking for someone because they saw me. They must have waited at the gas station and saw me do what I was doing. Yeah. Or something. I don't know. So that's when the cops, you know, called me over. I immediately went over. I didn't hesitate. Uh, They asked me what I was doing, why I was trespassing and all this stuff. And I was like, I'm a resident here. I wasn't trespassing. I was just getting my phone charger. So... And they were like, no, you're trespassing. It's after hours, blah, blah, blah. Um, your resident director isn't aware that you're there, so you're actually trespassing. Campus safety pulls up as I'm talking to this cop. To be honest with you, maybe it's because we lived in Cedarville. I'm really not too sure. Maybe it's because I knew this cop related to somebody I went to school with. Yeah, I mean, like it was clearly like later. we had a bad reputation with probably the city cops and the Mm -hmm. public safety that they knew who we were and any opportunity that they caught us red handed, they were going to kind of deal with it. Yep. So when campus safety came up and saw that they, the cop was dealing with it, they didn't help. They said, you must, you must have this. It's all you, whatever. And I knew that person too. They were kind of happy that I was getting in trouble with police instead of them doing anything. So they left. So this cop, I'm giving him attitude. I'm like, isn't it campus safety's job if this is the campus? Like I was being very sarcastic. Probably shouldn't have said the things I did. So he got pretty upset with me, threw me up against the vehicle, handcuffed me and put me in the back of the vehicle. At this point, I'm pretty sure my friends had left. Either that or when we drove by with me in the back of the car, they just didn't know what to do. I don't remember. But they couldn't get a hold <laughs> of me. My phone was still dead. Put me in the back of the car. Put me in the back of the car. Breaking Cuffed me. in your own place of living. Started to drive me to downtown area on Main Street in yeah. Cedarville. It's very easy to go to anywhere driving from one end of the town to the other. Like you can turn on any street to get anywhere. So I didn't know what he was doing at first. I assumed he was taking me downtown. Right. Put me in the slammer for trespassing or whatever. He was giving me a speech about how all of the university staff kids are entitled and we need to be taught a lesson. And he just was going on and on about all this stuff, about how he hated dealing with us and that we need to learn respect and all this stuff. After driving Which around for it's probably been 10. True. Like in hindsight. Probably. Like, probably right, Haas. Probably. But the way that he handled it wasn't good. Like oh, he no. was rough with me. Um. And so my parents didn't file a report, but they said something to the chief of police because he took me home. So he drove me around trying to give me like a lecture on how to be a human, this um, is an how older to be a man, better person and not man. be a little jerk. <clears throat> he was a younger guy and he was the older brother of a girl that was in my class. Okay. There weren't that many cops in Cedarville. Yeah. She was a tall girl. They went to our church. Okay. He was older than both of our brothers, our oldest brothers. So there was a big age gap. So he was part of that um, um, that generation where, in order to be a cop, you had to have your dick measured, and if you had a big stick, you could do it. You had a big fucking stick. 
if that's it. It's two sure, episodes in a sure. row I was able to play that in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're doing a good job. <laughs> I like talking about big sticks, Joe. Um, anyway. Uh so yeah, he he finally texted me to my house. It's like at this point, it was probably closer to three in the morning. Jesus. Wakes my parents up because he rings the doorbell, right? Cop out front with your son. My parents are just like, what's going on? Um, he explained what I was doing to my parents. Thought it would be a better idea to take me home than take me to jail. Because he thought it was jail justified. My parents said thank you and were really respectful like they always are. And then they, you know, they closed the door and the guy left. So they were asking me what was going on, what I was doing, all that stuff. I got in trouble, grounded, which I couldn't be grounded. I was in college. Yeah. Um, it was just this lecture thing. But I told him how rough he was with me. And that my dad was actually more interested in that. He was not happy. My mom was still very bummed that I broke the rules and I was being a bad like, kid. Bummed you broke but, the rules, but like at the same point, like like mom, like mom, dad, like he picked me up at one fifteen. It is three something in the morning now. Like, what do you mean? Like, he's just been we driving drove around, around while, yelling man. at me for the last hour and a half. Like, yeah, I can apologize, but what was he doing? At what point in the rule so, book is that? interesting trust me interesting he got fired um my my dad was telling me about that because he remembers that situation obviously it was a big point in my college career Mm -hmm. because a lot of my world crashed when i quit college right parents were like nope you got to get out you're not going to go to christian school not going to follow or get out right so same idea you know what i'm talking about but shortly after he moved on with me yeah yeah. so it was one of those things where I learned, you know, learned a lot of lessons there, but man, that, that guy did that. And he was even more, he got like super physical and violent with some students and like got sued and then fired, I guess, or something, something crazy happened. And it happened multiple times where he was aggressive with people and got reported and he finally got fired. So he's not a cop anymore, at least not in Cedarville. Thank wow. God. And a lot of times with them that once when that stigma gets stuck with you, you like, you really can't, you really can't outlive it. No, no. So we're um, we're getting close to. We it. got one oh eight. We can do your last story real quick. All right. So you didn't stop for the for the pee break. Yeah, I I, I got it. So my last story I want to tell, and like I think we're like we kind of talked about it offhand that we were gonna do a uh, reoccurring boys will be boys or the dumb shit we did when we grew up or have a reoccurring pod of this. Cause we still have so many more stories we want to tell, but I want to end it with this story. Um, I was in living in Fort Wayne. So you, you, I might've told you this story, but I don't think I ever actually, you, you weren't involved in any part of it. So like the school we went to, everybody went to Sarasota, somewhere in Florida, like the whole, the whole school just like relocated to a new city. Right. And me and another buddy, we didn't go or, we we stay by like our parents didn't go on vacation like that, and so we stay behind. And one of my buddies had this phobia of cotton balls. Like he he said he didn't like the way they sounded, and like I don't know what sound it makes or feel or whatever. But like he he had like some sort of sensory thing with cotton balls, and so me and my buddy went to his house because he had gone on vacation, but his fam- like he went on vacation with another family. His family was still at the house. And so we went and knocked on the door and mom was there. And we we're like, Hey, like we want to do this prank on our, his, uh, our buddy Matt's car. And we said, uh, we want to do this. We want to fill it with cotton balls. And we're going we're gonna to fill it all the way. And my buddy Matt had this like love like deeply loved his vehicle. He had an old Ford Bronco. It was fucking badass. Like it was a sweet old Ford Bronco. It uh he had bullhorns on the front of it. Like it it was his baby, right? So we told, awesome. told his mom that we're gonna get uh fill it with cotton balls. And she's like, oh okay, yeah, that that would be really funny. He would hate that. And like she was a Spanish teacher at the school, like super super sweet woman, and like completely naive to like the hell we were about to do to this thing. So. She was like, well, I'm getting ready to go run some errands. Here's his car keys. Um, when you guys get back, just leave the keys in the mailbox. 
So we take his car keys. We go buy all these cotton balls. We go to like beautician supply places, like anywhere we could find. Like we spent hundreds of dollars buying cotton balls. And, like when I said we filled his car, like we filled his car with cotton balls, right? And like That's you crazy. go to like the Sally Beauty supply places, and they have like the string cotton ball cotton balls. I don't really know what they're mm-hmm. used for, but like it's like rope cotton balls, right? So we rope it all through his car, and we're doing all this, and we have his car keys, and we're like. You know what would be funny is if we made copies of his car keys and we just had his car keys at all times and we could move his car and do whatever we want with his car at any given time. So we took his car keys and went to like Ace Hardware and made like a bunch of copies of his keys and then back turned when you the could do that. keys back into his mom. And then like, so yeah. now we just have his car keys, right? And so like, that's amazing. Once again, like I'm getting back to the story of like, I don't, I'd imagine we told him, I I think he knows this. I think he knows we had his car keys, but I think it was like the same story as like the deer. Like we, like we kept it a secret for so long. And then we like, just forgot to tell him like, Hey, like we, we had your car keys. And so like school would happen and we would like move his car across the parking lot or like, like not across the parking, like on like completely opposite end, like park in the corner, like. Like, I know I didn't do that. Like, who did that? Like, why, why is my car over there? We're, like, park it up onto a flower bed. And, like, he's the type of guy that would do this shit. Like, he would park it in, like, or we would park it, like, on the soccer field and, like, do it in places, like, it shouldn't be there. But he's the type of kid that, like, all the teachers, all the, everybody thought, like, he's the kid that would do that shit, right? And so, like, we did this for yeah a long time. Like, we would be at, a, at like, a... Uh, event and like we would take his key car and like park it on the other side of the block and stuff like that so he probably had a good idea it was one of us but like it was a long time until he ever found out that we had his car keys and was like moving his car around the around the place parking it on flower beds and stuff like that like that was one of my favorite ones that's amazing and also like he had to pay his neighbor to get the cotton balls out of his car because he wouldn't go into it like his car just sat there for like a week after he came came back from a spring break because he like refused to get inside of the car with the cotton balls in there. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, that's great. I, I, I enjoy I've heard that stories one, about I, people messing with other ones. people's cars, but yeah, I've never messed with anyone's cars. Um, I know that guys I used to work with at um, a company in Middletown, they make steel. Um, they used to put all kinds of stuff under people's door handles, like peanut butter. Um, they would use, there's this stuff called never seize and you put, it's like a grease, but it never seizes. You put it on giant industrial bolts that are like huge, like yeah. biggest bolts you've ever seen. And, uh, they would put those underneath like the windshield wipers. And when you wipe it, it doesn't go away. It actually just keeps smearing and keeps smearing. It's like oh, that's the worst, the most annoying substance ever. It's the kind of stuff where they sell you one bottle. It's like this big. It's really small. It's like thirty bucks, and it lasts you a very long time because you never really need to use it. Yeah. And these guys would take these jars of it and just slather it on guys' windshield wipers. So anytime, but they wouldn't know until it start to rain. Can't see a fucking thing because oh my god, all over the terrible. windshield, insane. They would also um, take forklifts and they would clear, they had uh, tires on these giant road construction vehicles that were huge. So they'd have giant shelves in the warehouse. They would forklift people's trucks or cars. They would move these giant tires and put their vehicles up on shelves and then like go hide the forklift. Dude would come back and his truck would be like on a shelf in the warehouse. Could you imagine? Oh my god! You're trying to go home, and your truck's like up on a shelf, and like everybody's gone. We would. Uh, <laughs> that would suck so bad. Like where I work, we would take like raw chicken and like like a raw chicken wing, and like put it underneath your car seat, and so like you just have this raw oh, sewage smell, so or like like we would do different that's stuff so with gross. like raw chicken or raw chicken blood, like stuff like that. Like just make your shit st- fucking stink. That's gross. Oh yeah. Not really any smell pranks, I don't think, um, that I can remember. But we can save a lot of these for our next our next prank round, though. Oh yeah, I mean we're we're at that point. Where we can, I know we got we good ones. Wrap it up. Yeah, yeah, we can. 
Um, the Best Man Podcast on Twitter. We got to figure out our Instagram name. Mm-hmm. Probably, probably the Best Man Pod. Did you, you end up setting it up, right? Mm-mm. See, I thought, no, I thought I that's what time. you said. Like, I was confused about your message about that. No. We'll talk about that after. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll, we'll clip that out. Yeah, yeah. Follow us on social media. Check us out. Share us. Like us. Yeah. I think that's it. Yep. Share it. Like us. Have fun. Enjoy it. If we forgot a detail, please uh, fact check us on our on our prank stories don't fact check us on our real life propaganda we're spreading correct yes just on our stories yeah so hopefully the friends that that will hear this that live in cedarville will be like they actually did that because i i think a lot of it was rumor especially in high school probably had no idea that a lot of the stuff we did was reality and probably should have been arrested for most of it. I mean, there's a few people that like I, I see on a regular basis, and like I'll I'll tell them like stories of like, I can't believe you did that. Like, I can't yeah. believe you didn't we know can't you either. did that. I mean, yeah, yeah. No, they didn't believe it. Half yeah. the people that I've asked about certain things that I've talked to since high school, it's not been that many people. But some of those stories will come up when that happens. I'm just like, that actually happened. They're like. You guys didn't. I mean, so, so we're not proud of it. We're older now. We were so stupid. So, so stupid. stupid. But the issue was like, there was never, there was rarely just two or three of us. It was like five to 10 of us. And like, they were gassing up one person to go do something really stupid. And like, nobody was the mm-hmm. clear conscience of like, eh, that's probably a bad idea. You shouldn't do that. And like, the rest of us were like, yeah. fuck it. Go, pussy. Yeah, that's usually what ended up happening. And it worked because none of us wanted to be that way, right? Yeah. We didn't want to be the guy that wouldn't do it. Yeah. So, all right. Yep. Like us, follow us, share us, enjoy it, love it, fact check us, send us a message on the DMs, or if you got our number, shoot us a message and uh, remind us of a story or fact check us. I love it. Yeah, killer. See you guys next time. See you. Bye, buddy. Later.